Hello everybody and welcome to IGB Live in Amsterdam. My name is Robin Harrison, I'm the B2B editor at Clarion Gaming and I'm here with Peter Paul de Hooy of the Netherlands Online Gambling Association. How do you expect the entry of new licensees into the Dutch market to change the order of who's performing well? Yeah, so uh, for those of uh, the viewers that do not know uh, the Dutch market, the Dutch market basically had a, a staged market opening in which uh, uh, basically the land-based operators predominantly uh, were allowed to get into the market first and then some international operators that were active on the Dutch market before regulation were told to uh, cool off. Um, and uh, they are now uh, dripping into the market. Um, uh, some of them uh, quite renowned uh, brands in the Netherlands, like um, uh, Unibet. Um, and you know, market shares uh, since October last year uh, have been pretty, um, pretty uh, stable, I would say, uh, in favor of uh, the, the state-owned companies like uh, Holland Casino and uh, most predominantly uh, NLO, which operate the Toto betting uh, and casino brand. Um, and uh, I, I, I do expect that their market shares will come under uh, some pressure because of, um, because of the entry of uh, the likes of Unibet, but also, um, uh, you know, BWIN uh, that are coming onto the market, PokerStars. Uh, because you know their brands are pretty uh, renowned in the, in the Netherlands and pretty popular with uh, online gamblers in the Netherlands. Um, but I think the effect on the percentages will be limited at first because the market as a whole uh, continues to grow. Uh, the, the Netherlands is lagging behind when it gets to uh, total spend per capita on uh, gambling products in comparison to the rest of Europe. So there is also going to be some catching up, uh, I think. And uh, so I expect the effects to be limited at first. Thank you. And then turning to the topic of advertising, has the industry received any further insight about what a ban on untargeted ads will entail in practice? Well, we're currently awaiting uh, uh, the publication of the draft decree. Uh, it will first go to the, ca the, the Council of Ministers, which is convening this Friday. Um, and if all goes well, they get to decide on uh, what this decree will, uh, will look like or what the draft decree will look like before it goes into consultation. Uh, that will happen on the same day it is, um, uh, it is expected. Uh, they might run off into uh, the next uh, Council of Ministers meeting uh, next week, Friday, but that, that will be the ultimate date by when we know what it will entail. But what we do know now is that all forms of untargeted advertising will be banned, uh, which means that basically television, radio, out of home and print will no longer be possible for, uh, for online gambling. Uh, or for, um, I should say, for uh, high-risk gambling, because that was the text of the motion calling on the government to impose this ban. Um, but how it will be uh, drafted exactly, we still don't know. So we are awaiting uh, and, and we're, we're, we're hoping for the best, basically. Where does the responsibility lie for ensuring this ban is implemented in an effective and orderly fashion? Yeah, so basically uh, the government uh, decided to do the will of parliament because parliament in a majority twice uh, uh, adopted a motion by MP Van Nispen of the Socialist Party calling on the government to ban untargeted advertising for um, uh, high-risk uh, gambling. Um, and um, so the government will uh, decide in the cabinet of ministers uh, how uh, and, and, and what kind of ban and what it will look like. And then it will be on the Ministry of Justice, who is a responsible ministry, uh, on how this ban will uh, be effectuated. Uh, but before it comes into force, it will be con uh, consulted, uh, consulted with the market. So there will be a consultation period. But it will also be cons uh, consulted with Parliament. But I don't expect Parliament to have any big problems. They might suggest to put more stuff under the ban, which has already been alluded to by uh, the same uh, MP Van Nispen, who is suggesting to put 
uh, sports sponsoring uh, by gambling companies under this ban as well, which we think is not a good idea. And then last month, Rene Janssen hinted that the KSA could consider loss limits for certain products. I mean, what, what kind of stage are those discussions at and what kind of impact do you expect that to have? Well, the, basically the issue at hand here is that under Dutch law and regulations, you need to offer the setting of limits to players. Uh, so this is a, a, a part of the requirements of the license. Uh, but government and, and, and parliament, when they were discussing these uh, limits, did not decide on how, how high or low these limits should be, uh, just that you would offer limits setting to, uh, to uh, consumers. And what we have seen now is that in some instances, consumers are offered to set limits at 999,999 uh, euros and 99 cents, simply because that is the number of uh, uh, spaces in, in their platform, uh, which I think is not a serious limit. Uh, so what we have been advocating is that uh, gambling companies take their uh, responsibility and act in accordance with their duty of care to uh, consumers, is that they apply limit setting which impose proper limits, you know, meaningful limits, uh, limits that work and not the limitless limits that uh, currently are being offered. Now, what the minister is investigating is uh, on demand of parliament as well, uh, whether or not they can set up a system of national limits, so overarching limits that um, don't set limits at the operator level but at the player level. So if a player sets a limit for 1,000 euro in the month, he cannot play more than a thousand euros divided over one operator or 20 operators. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're, we're waiting to see uh, how this pans out and uh, uh, what the minister will come up with. But uh, it's currently being investigated. And then finally, a, when the market launched, there was a clear focus on targeting unlicensed or offshore operators. Yes. So now we're around 10 months on. Has that level of uh, enforcement been, been kept up? Yeah, of course we, uh, we are very much in favor of uh, the KSA, which is Dutch regulator, to enforce uh, the Dutch uh, law and, uh, and, and regulations. Uh, the minister uh, looking after gambling in the Netherlands is called the Minister for Legal Protection. Uh, as much as consumers need the legal protection from, uh, from let's say, the illegal operators, uh, the legal operators need the protection from the minister as well. So we really want to be protected from the adverse effects of the illegal operators out there that are targeting Dutch consumers without a license. Um, and we want to compete fair and square and not with illegal operators. So we would like to ramp up um, uh, the um, uh, the KSA's activities in this field uh, and we would like to see their uh, their legal powers expended um, so that effectively we can you know basically close the gaps that are still there uh, and I, I you know just to mention one thing here it's still possible to buy advertising with Google uh, to you know to target Dutch consumers even when you don't have a license I think this is something that we should look at uh, to begin with. Um, so uh, I, I hope that Google will work with us and with, with the Dutch authorities to basically close the net and uh, you know, make it impossible for illegal operators to target Dutch consumers. Peter Paul, thank you very much. You're welcome and thanks for, uh, for having me.